Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today we're covering lever actions in our fall hunting rifle series. Uh, after this, we'll have two more videos to go, one on single shots and one on semi-autos. Lever actions, I think, are the most fun hunting rifles uh, for no other reason than they make me feel like a cowboy. And I got into lever actions, and this is gonna expose both my age and my fondness for computer games, but because of Fallout New Vegas. Uh, I really loved the cowboy repeater in that game and I loved the brush gun. So as I recall, the Cowboy Repeater was a 357 Mag uh, Winchester 94, and the Cowboy Repeater, I think, was a 4570 Marlin. That, that's, or not the Cowboy Repeater, the brush gun was based on that. So I've always wanted one of each. Now I wound up with a 3030 Winchester 94, and my buddy just bought this 3030 Marlin 336, and he's lent it to me for the purposes of this video. Now, I didn't tell him, but I kind of just assumed this might have issues with the stock, so I pulled it apart and put some epoxy on where the ears are busted off inside. It's a super common issue with these guns. It's not a huge fix. It usually takes me about an hour and a half to get it sorted out, so we're just going to do that, and when he watches the video, he'll know I've done this. Um, sorry, bud. I'm, I'm not charging you either because you didn't lend me the gun for this video, and, you know, the favor should be returned in kind. Now, long and the short of it is the two things that set these guns apart historically was the ease of mounting optical sights on the Marlin and the pistol grip. Now, I don't care about a pistol grip and I don't really care about iron sights because this is not meant to be a practical rifle. This is meant to make me giggle when I'm shooting things at the range. And I have absolutely no other reason for ownership than that. I've got a million other deer, guns I can go hunt deer with. And I'm probably going to take this out because, frankly, it's light and it's handy and it looks cool and it makes me feel like a cowboy. Um, so why would you buy one or the other? No, it's entirely preference. My older customers have a strong preference towards the Marlin because my older customers have bad eyes and arthritis. And the two things that the Marlin does better than the Winchester is cycling smoothly with minimal effort and scopes. Now you have the angle eject Winchester 94s, but they get a little bit bulky and top heavy because it's still not really the best scope arrangement. It's not a bad scope arrangement, but it's not the best thing in the world. Now we're going to limit our handling of this Marlin because it does have that stock repair curing and I don't want to disturb the epoxy and make a bad bond. But we're just going to use the Winchester 94 while we discuss this. So the Winchester 94 is a lot notchier and takes a lot more effort to caulk. And I'm going to shut up for a second and you'll hear a click. And that's the elevator or carrier or whatever you want to call it clicking into position as we cycle the action. Now, the reason I would... Um, recommend for older customers the Marlin, regardless of the fact that it's heavier, is that they'll have an easier time cycling this and won't have as many cycling issues. And I think their wrists aren't going to bother them as, as much because it's a more neutral hand position. On the Winchester, you really have to cock your wrists while you're shooting it. On the Marlin, you can really hold it like a modern handgun, more or less. And on the Marlin, as you cycle it, once you get past the hammer, it's really effortless to cycle. And you can be using your, your wrist and your forearm as you're closing this, your, your hand strength. Because the, the way the elevator or carrier is cycled through this camming action, it cams on the upstroke. And this gun also is very dry and requires lubrication. So I would say that once I lube this, it's going to be even smoother. It, as far as I can tell, this gun probably has about 50 rounds through it. Uh, there's next to no wear on the moving components. So it's not going to be as smooth as my gun. My, my gun, I've, I've shot a lot more than 50 rounds on it in just the last couple of weeks. So the Marlins, I think, are a little bit smoother, all else being equal. And they're both great guns. Like, there's nothing wrong with them. 
you know, the lever actions are very fast cycling. So in municipalities that don't allow hunting like semi-autos, like now Massachusetts, I think we're going to see a lot of manually operated repeaters take off down there. And I think since there's no pump actions, new production on the market, lever actions are going to fly off the shelves in mass because they're fast. We're already seeing that become very popular in Connecticut with their assault weapons bans. You, you see all these just ridiculous space lever guns, which is like the new fad right now. Uh, and people are putting suppressors on their lever actions also. And if you're going to put a suppressor on your lever action, please, for the love of God, bring me a Marlin. It's a lot less headache on my end to get that to work because I don't have to do as much modification on both the magazine tube and the front sight. The magazine tube on the Marlin stops short of the muzzle. So you see here how it stops short. And on a lot of these guns, um, I can change your front sight out to something else, use the existing screw holes. And all I'll have to do is cut about a quarter, half an inch off the magazine there, drill a new hole for your retainer, and then move on with my life. Uh, it's, I have to do the whole front sight kit and caboodle. These are soldered on, not screwed on. And I have to do a lot more work with the magazine tube on a Winchester. So if you're suppressing a mar uh, lever action, just use a Marlin. It's gonna be easier for both of us. Um, accuracy wise, I would give a slight edge to the Winchesters. I shoot this on average about a one inch group off a rest at 50 yards. Uh, I've shot this once, I've shot Two groups with this, both were hovering around an inch and a half at 50 yards. Now, I'm going to say I think part of the difference is just the sighting setups. Yes, these both have peep sights. I have a much easier to focus on front sight. It's fiber optic, and I still have the aperture in this. But that really just makes it easier for me to shoot well, taking my time with it. I still shot worse with this. And I've found on average Winchester lever actions have been very accurate. Now, that being said, Winchester 94s are the number one thing I get people calling me to rebore the barrels or reline them. And there's two reasons I don't want to do that. I don't want to reline any center fire rifle barrels. Uh, it becomes an insurance liability. And I think there's only really marginal safety when you're using a 42,000 PSI cartridge. Uh, the rule of thumb I've been told by people who line barrels a lot more than I do is after 40,000 PSI, things get really sketchy. Limit yourself to 25 or 30,000 PSI cartridges or black powder. And what I also have told a lot of customers, and they all disappear and go to someone else when I say this, is look, let me look at your gun before we try a reline and we even work out pricing on that. Let me really clean the barrel, recrown it, in test fire. Generally speaking, that will get you back into what I would consider acceptable accuracy for deer hunting, which is anything less than a three inch group at a hundred yards. And a lot of people don't like to hear that because they don't want to admit to themselves that just cleaning the gun can make a huge difference. And one of the reasons I would recommend a recrown is because these are cleaned from the muzzles, Unless you're very careful, you can get cleaning rod wear. And they're stuck muzzled down in the passenger seat, which can damage the crown over time when you're driving around with them over the course of 40, 50, 60, 70 years. So that can solve most of your accuracy issues. And you're looking at, you know, a $250 or $350 bill, depending on how far we have to go, versus a, you know, six or $800 bill because we're also avoiding refinishing. And when you clean these, is I like to take them down absolutely every screw, clean absolutely everything, because God knows what else you're gonna find. And, and the lifters in these will wear out over time. Now, fortunately, there's new production ones on the market and they're very easy to acquire. Parts are very easy to acquire for both of these guns at the time of recording. So, Let's put it to you this way. If you're looking at a lever gun, you really can't go wrong with any of the well-made American ones. Um, this is supposedly the absolute worst that Winchester's ever made, and I friggin' love the thing. So I don't think you can go wrong with a Winchester 94. I don't think you can really go wrong with the Marlin 336. 
except for some of the Rem Marlins, and they're just really badly made. And it's not any issue with the design, that's just a quality control issue. You know, Freedom Group in that period was really struggling because this was also during a recession and gun shells were shit. So everyone was pumping out a lot of garbage at that time because people would only pay for garbage because it's what they could afford. And I think the 3030 is a really good all around cartridge. You know, the 4570 I think is overkill, um, pun intended, for most Northeastern game. You know, I can sort of understand it on Black Bear and I can sort of understand it on Moose. But I know of four or five moose and a lot more than that black bears that have been killed with federal blue box 3030. So I don't think you really need to go fancy on this because you're running at moderate velocity and moderate pressure. So you get pretty good bullet performance regardless of brand. Um, and I just really, I really like lever actions. They're fun. And I think that's the selling point on them is they're fun. You get a connection to the old west. You know, you think of the guy in his red and black plaid smoking his Marlboro Red, smacking a deer at 50 yards and bringing home his, like, 18-point buck. And that's fun. And I think deer hunting should be fun, and you shouldn't get lost in maximum performance. You know, that's besides the point. You should really focus on why are you actually doing this. And for me and my friends that I hunt with, it's about going out, having fun, enjoying nature, and just a nice day in the woods if you shoot something that's even better so thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed and i wish you all success on your hunts this fall you know from the looks of things i think it's going to be a pretty good good hunting season you know i just saw four deer today just riding around doing my errands